Uh, it's wonderful to see everybody. Uh, Moe, some of you I haven't seen in a while, and it's like, uh, this is like being home. It's good to be home. And uh, aren't you glad you don't live in Florida this morning? Uh, yeah, or, thank you, or Houston. Um, and then uh, we were talking about that last night on bots, and then uh, somebody added something else as well, and that is, uh, it's what about California where you've got all the fires or and then Canada where they're having uh, you know just a lot of things going on uh, that creates a lot of uh, havoc and stress and uh, you know these disasters that are going on so uh, I'm with what Larry said and uh, about praying for the safety and protection of all those down in Florida uh, for what's coming up the coast and even though it's down to 125 they keep warning on the Weather Channel this morning that it's still got a lot of open water from Cuba to, to the tip uh, to gain it back speed, uh, you know, once again. So uh, we'll see how all, all this plays out. I was in contact with uh, this more well, two stories. One, uh, the Wendells, who live between Tampa and Orlando uh, and, and attend that Auburndale congregation, uh, right now they're hanging and staying. staying. Um, and that's because that is the only county that has, been, has not been told to evacuate in that whole area. Um, my daughter's husband's parents live south of Port Charlotte, which is on the west coast south of Tampa. They weren't leaving until uh, th this morning the uh, Coast Guard came by with the, you know, mandatory evacuations and said, you've got to get out of here. Uh, because, you know, storm surge is going to be, who knows, 10 feet maybe, and then you got 20-foot waves on top of that, and how far inland does that go? Uh, the devastation uh, is going to, you know, it's potentially loss of life is, you know, horrendous, and, uh, and it will be the worst storm to maybe ever hit Florida. We, we don't know about that. So, yeah, let's be offering prayers, uh, thoughts, and, and then we'll have to figure ways we can help, you know, uh, like for Houston, I, I know they're going to be years in recovery, and we'll figure some ways that we can uh, individually and I think collectively uh, help. I know some are, are, have already called me and said, hey, we're sending money into CGI, and you all figure something out to do and, and, you know, use the money for it. So we will do that, and we'll figure something that will hopefully be beneficial, uh, you know, for, for that. And for us to help and fulfill Matthew 25 and... Uh, take care of our, uh, you know, our brothers and our sisters out there, those that, that are in need. Which uh, should, you know, it does say that we're supposed to, uh, you know, take care of the household of faith. But also it says everybody. So, you know, our, our hearts and our hands should be in service to all who have need. Not, not just, uh, you know, uh, those that are in the church. So, right? Let's take care of everybody. I want to welcome everybody on the, that's looking in on the webcast this morning. Happy Sabbath. I got to do that last week. Uh, I was actually down in South Texas and going to be heading up to Abilene for services. And guess what? There was no fuel. Uh, they were out of fuel except for premium and diesel in Mason, where I was. And I talked to Mr. Bailey in Abilene. Well, that's on the 20 corridor. And they were out up there, uh, too. So everybody, so anyway, I, I was able to watch John uh, yeah, last Sabbath on the, on the webcast, so that was very, very enjoyable. So, uh, yes, I am thrilled to have my cheering section with me today. Um, she left and went back with the, with the teen study, and, and uh, it's hard to believe that my granddaughter is a freshman in high school. So, uh, it's, uh, boy, time flies. So... Hope you will welcome her and welcome all of our youth and uh, we, we, our future of the church certainly depends on, on them and uh, of course most of all on God. Larry, I'm glad we didn't announce all of the prayer requests because I've got some to go over but I'm going to hang on for a little bit before I do that. Uh, <clears throat> how, many of you, how many of you have any trials? <laughs> Wait a minute, let me, ask, let me ask it this way. If you don't have any trials, please raise your hand. Okay, that, that takes care of that. Uh, we, it, hey, life is full of it, of difficult trials. I want to talk about that today uh, uh, because I think sometimes we can be overwhelmed with difficulty and the trials, so much so that we don't focus and remember the great future that we have. 
Uh, and I am a glass half full approach to these things. And we have a tremendous future ahead. Uh, we have unbelievable promises, unbelievable. We can't even fathom what it will be like to be sons and daughters in the kingdom of God. Uh, I, I hope we can spend a little, you know, a few minutes talking about some of those things. But let's start off, though, by turning over here to 1 Peter chapter 4. Somehow, we would like it to be different than it is as human beings and especially as Christians. We would like our lives to be without trials, right? And what does Scripture say about that? Well, let's read that. That's uh, where we're turning here to 1 Peter chapter 4. And we do think, verse 12 says, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. Now, how many of us have ever entered a trial and we go, Oh, why me? Right? I don't, I, I, honestly, I don't know why it is. God chooses for each of us, I think, trials that we must go through. And he says he never puts a trial on us that we can't handle. You believe that? He does not put a trial on any of us that we can't deal with and that we can't, can't handle. Therefore, I am convinced there are some trials I don't get because I couldn't handle them. Have you thought about that? That maybe some of the trials that you see others have, they're stronger and they can handle it. Maybe, you, maybe we couldn't, maybe I couldn't handle it. And there is something in there about the, sacri the sufferings of Christ must be filled. And I, and, I, and I don't know why you go through one trial and I go through another, or why uh, a, a couple of young people that I want to talk about, why they suffer what they're suffering and why I don't. Sometimes we, have, we, we think about that sometimes, don't we? But most of all, we focus in on, I have trials, woe is me. But verse 13 says, but rejoice inasmuch as you are partakers of Christ's sufferings. Uh, no, there isn't going to be life without trials and difficulties. It's just not uh, what we're here for. That when His glory shall be revealed, you may be glad <laughs> with exceeding joy. Hey, and won't that be the way it is? If we will endure, if we will hang through all the, the difficulties, it will be the most joyous time when we get there and all of that is behind us. But we have to hang in there. If you want a title today, it's just hang in there. Hang in there. We've got to hang in here together. We've got to, we've got to stay focused. Uh, <clears throat> life is hard enough, but frankly, a, a true Christian in any age, you know, things are harder because you know, we're told that we will have to suffer, go through things. Stresses, setbacks, daily challenges, uh, you know, ordinary life is challenging. And we face, you know, many, <clears throat> excuse me, many Christians face even, you know, persecution. But continuing to read here, it says, verse 14, If you be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are you, for the spirit of glory of, of, God, of God rests upon you. On their part he is evil spoken of, but on your part he is glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer or as a thief. And we know that. You know, if we're going to suffer, uh, and we know there are, there are many forms of trials that come upon us, but we don't want to suffer for our own foolishness, do we? We, we don't. I believe that basically trials come at us in different ways. I believe we get them from God, number one. Uh, obviously, we know that from Scripture. Uh, we know that if we are Christians and faithful to Him, we are going to be challenged. And that will be a trial for some of us. We, we can see some of those examples today. Uh, what we just read about, you know, let none of you suffer as a murderer. You know, we don't want to be buffeted for our own faults, as, a, as another verse says. And this covers many forms. And we, we foolishly, get, you know, don't we? <laughs> Stumble and fall. Uh, I, I believe we're tempted by Satan. He is after each and every one of us on all fronts at all times. Uh, and without God's protection, I hope, I hope we all pray for God's protection every day uh, for ourselves and for our family members and that, he would, that God would rebuke and protect us because the enemy is strong. says he can take us at will. 
you know, we need God's Spirit to, to help us through those temptations and trials. And then I'm convinced there is another form of trials called time and chance. Time and chance. And hey, there may be more. Uh, there may be more as well reasons. But those are the ones that, that uh, you know, I overall kind of can, cat can, uh, can categorize rather easily and quickly. But God has never promised us escape from trials and tests. He doesn't promise that. In fact, He promises that we will have difficulties. So, I hope we will find this encouraging today, this message. And I would like to ask something of every one of you today. All of you that are looking in on the webcast, I have a request. And I ask that your faith remain steadfast and unmovable in God through all of the difficulties that you are currently going through and through all of the difficulties that may come down the road in the future because we don't know, do we, what will come our way. But I ask that you remain faithful and steadfast and that you hang in there for the rewards and the, the great future that God has for each of us. Hang in there so that we can receive those wonderful things. You know, uh, <clears throat> Of, all, of many of the biblical characters, I, I really gravitate. I'm, <laughs> I gravitate to Paul an awful lot because that guy had, he was tough. And he suffered a lot. And yet through it all, he had such wonderful wisdom and direction and help for us. And one of those verses is in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. If you'll turn with me there, 1 Corinthians 15. And, you know, the, this is known as the resurrection chapter and the verses that precede where I'm going to read, I would like us to read verse 57 and 58, but the verses that precede that, he talks about the last enemy being delivered up, which is, which is death and, and hell. And, man, we look forward to that when there's no, a time of no more death, no more suffering, no more pain. But guess what? We're still in it. We're still going through it. And his words were, but... Thanks be to God, which has given us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And there is hope for us right there. That, you know, the ultimate battle has been won by Jesus Christ. You know, we, he, he died for us so that we, we could have the hope and the future that we have of eternal life. Uh, and, you know, it's through his death that we're able to have that. Of course... Hey, we have our part and our job to do, and you know, when we stumble, we need forgiveness, but <laughs> he, he has the ultimate victory, and we, and has given us his spirit, because we too will have the ultimate victory. It's a promise, if we will hang in there and remain faithful to him. Verse 58, therefore, my beloved brethren, be you steadfast, unmovable, always, Always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. I hope, we, I hope we recognize that. And I hope we believe that. That what you're going through is not in vain. It's for a purpose because it's making you stronger. It's forming each and every one of us into those individuals that God wants us to be. We're actually becoming like our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And it's only done through trials and tests. I, I'm sorry, and we don't like that because we don't like to change. We like everything comfortable. And God says it can't be that way because you, wouldn't, you really wouldn't change and become the people that I need you to become. And so he says, therefore, I challenge you. I give you trials. I give you difficulties. And life is hard. Life is hard, but guess what? Life has been harder for some. And I'm here to say there is life is harder for a few a lot harder than my trials. Uh, I, I, I hope we recognize that. Think about a man by the name of Job. And we know about the Apostle Paul, you know, shipwrecked so many times, stoned and left for dead, beaten with a rod. I'm sure he had scars and, you know, beyond, and that he was uh, physically dis, you know, marred because of what he was willing to go through. But look at Job. He, you know, he suffered the loss of all things, family, everything he owned. 
Guess what? God allowed that to happen. In fact, God said to Satan, Hey, have you seen my servant Job? And he says, Yeah, but if you do this, you give him a test and trials, he's going to curse you to your face. Did he? Oh, I think we can take a lot of encouragement from Job because through all those difficulties, he, he always loved God and said God was faithful. Actually, Job gives me a lot of hope. And if you want to read of the, th the things that he suffered, just read Job 1. Read that whole chapter, Job 1. But he gives me hope. I, I've, I, have ne I have never seen the kind of trials that Job went through. Have you? Uh, and I'm going to be quite honest with you. I hope I never do. I hope I never do. But I hope that if I do receive some of those trials, that I would be able to handle them with the grace and elegance that Job handled them with. And that I would be as steadfast and trusting and unmovable in my faith as Job was. Um, <clears throat> Stan Roberts, uh, Steve Roberts asked me to read something to you guys this morning. He and I were uh, texting last night and he's not here today because he is suffering from poison ivy. Uh, and if you have suffered poison ivy, then um, you, will, you will know how bad that can be. Anyway, he's suffering pretty badly. Uh, so I would like to read what, uh, what he asked me to read. This is in con concerning his dad. He says, prayer request uh, tomorrow for dad, please. Uh, and, he, and I ask his permission to read two texts that uh, he asked me to read. He's been diagnosed with stage 3 cancer of the lungs and the lymph nodes and colon cancer to boot. He's been, through, he's been a real trooper through all of it. He is not afraid and is secure in his future. His faith is unmovable. I ask that we pray for, I get this, I ask that we pray for a short battle if this is how it ends for him. Thank you. It's a, fa a son talking about his father. He says, you can share, uh, share the above along with this story. After dad and I had received the disheartening news, his response later that morning was, God is good and that he hoped he lived out the rest of his days as he had already as he already had been with James 2 James 1 2 through 4 in mind thank you let's read that James chapter 1 and would we <laughs> i put myself in Mr. Roberts position would i say this today if I receive this news. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into different temptations. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith works patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. That's quite a mouthful. I, I, how do we learn to count it all joy? I mean, obviously, it's not a joyful experience when we go through a, a, a difficulty, whether it be an emotional trial or whether it be a physical challenge. It's not something you're happy about. But it says, knowing this, the trying of your faith works patience. There's something good going on there, even though it's hard and difficult. And Mr. Roberts is, I don't know, 83, 84, 82. Maybe 90. Yeah. Excuse me, that's correct. Um, anyway, that's marvelous faith, don't you think? I take encouragement from that. I, I take a lot of hope from that. I have a couple of other uh, stories that I'd like to uh, mention. 
Uh, <clears throat> one is, this was in the uh, Tulsa Church of God prayer request, you know, Rick, Rick, Rick Gaywith. Uh, it says, I'm asking prayers for a 13-year-old girl named Izzy Kitterman. Uh, she was in a horrific accident last Monday. You may have seen a lot about, this, about it on the news in Tulsa. A SUV crashed into a semi. Four people in the vehicle passed away. Although I don't know Izzy personally, I went to high school with her dad. Her father is asking for prayer. Izzy lost her brother and sister in the car accident. 13 years old. Um, and her mother last year. And it doesn't specify if it was a car accident or physical health or, you know, whatever it was. Um, she has a massive spinal injury and is paralyzed from the waist down. Still on a breathing tube with one lung, no, still not functioning well. By the way, this was in July that this, that I, I got this. The doctor, so I don't know an update uh, today. The doctors are saying she may never walk again. I'm asking for prayers that God will heal her lungs so she can breathe on her own and that he will completely heal her spinal, uh, her spine so that she can walk again. This girl and her family have been through so much. You know, why would she go through that? Why would she go through that? That's a, that's a, that is a, is that a trial? <laughs> but I tell you, I don't have any trials when I, when I, I, I see this. But I sure have a lot of empathy and it really hurts my heart for her and for, for those that suffer, uh, suffer greatly. Another, another one, um, this one, this one is um, quite challenging as well. Uh, <clears throat> this is a, a young boy, um, and I'm, I've honestly for, don't remember his age, 8, 9, 10, 11. Uh, his name is Kurt McCullough up in the Kansas City area. And uh, quite a few years ago, I think it was one of my first visits there to the church, he has, he has a brain tumor. And the brain tumor over the years has grown. And the, when I first saw him the first time, uh, this is, he, uh, the cutest little blonde headed kid, um, and he, you know, in a three piece suit at church. And after church, he says to me, I want to be a minister like you when I grow up. And then he's got this horrible trial that this tumor grows and which, you know, as that expands on the spinal, on the stem of the, br of the brain, it grows and begins to affect different parts of the physical body, uh, such as, uh, you know, there's a part of the brain that controls drooling and the way you're, you know, the drooping of the face or this, that was affected, so he constantly drools. Uh, phys you know, he had, and it was just, uh, a 10 year old boy who can't go out and throw a football or you know he can't do normal things and go hiking because he can't at this point walk anymore uh, and is having difficulty so anyway he had they had a, uh, this week an extensive surgery I mean when I say extensive long lasting like 16 hours and they were able to get here 80 um, says 80%, 80 percent. Dr. Kaufman just came in to talk with us about the MRI. He was able to remove about 80 percent of the tumor. He's very happy with how the surgery went and how well Kurt has handled it. However, he will not consider it a success until Kurt is functioning and we can see if he has quality of life, you know, if it's improved. So I think of a young boy who does not have a normal life. But I only, I only think, I not only think about him, I think about Denise's mom and his dad and his brother and how this changes their life. And these are, you know, and, and yet they are so faithful. And he, this little boy has such a wonderful, wonderful attitude, you know, towards the, the trials. And he's, he's a happy, happy young man. And why he goes through he, what he goes through now, I don't know. But 
I can just imagine the day when that is removed and he can minister. So we pray for him. We read this in 1 Peter chapter 3. And by the way, the stories could be we, we could go, you know, we could all be in tears all day long. But, you know, uh, we would be in tears here today with the challenges that I know all of you face, the difficulties that are here in this room uh, with, with health problems and, uh, you know, family issues and health. And, uh, and then all the other challenges, the spiritual challenges we have. And, uh, you know, it might, be, it might be financial. We're all challenged in some ways and sometimes in multiple ways. But 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, because we need to have some hope here today. With all of this that we go through, we, we better be looking at something that's really great that's ahead of us. Verse 3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to His abundant mercy has begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that fades not away reserved in heaven for you. <laughs> and you can put your name there. An inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and it does not fade away. It's not going to be something temporary. It isn't going to be something. God isn't an Indian giver. He isn't going to say, there, oh, no, I don't want you to have it. No, he's, it's reserved for you. And by the way, God is our biggest cheerleader. He is our biggest cheerleader. Who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time, wherein you greatly rejoice. Oh, I just I rejoice in that future and the hope. <laughs> it's going to be fantastic. Though now for a season, if need be, you are in heaviness through manifold temptations. Yes, that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. That's what, it, that's what we want through all of these difficulties and trials. That, it, that whatever we're going through, that we hang in there and we deal with it. And that it all be found to the praise and honor and glory of God and to a good result at His appearing. Because that will, be a, that, that will be a joyous moment, a joyous time. And guess what? His word promises us this reward. Uh, turn with me. I mean, we've got to read this. Revelation 21, 7. Revelation 21, verse 7. Have you ever thought about what it will be like to inherit all things? Verse 7 says, He that overcomes, those that will hang in there, those that will, will endure through the difficulties will be steadfast and unmovable, shall inherit all things. All things. All we think about is physical stuff, you know. I mean, we, we, we're so, we're, we can't see what, what is spiritual that we inherit in we don't even know what we'll look like, what it'll be like to, you know, to have a Ferrari engine for a body. I mean, see, we, see, we, 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 we liken it to physical things, but how will it be to travel at the speed of sound or however it is, uh, speed of thought? Oh, I think I'll take a run around uh, the universe here. Be back in a little while. Bye. I don't know. He that overcomes will inherit all things. I will be his God and he shall be my son. And by the way, that means daughter as well. Although I do know that as spirit beings, you know, it's not male or female. We'll be children of God. Whatever that's like. 
which we can't see. But have you ever thought about that at all, what it, what it will be like? Uh, I, uh, I try to think, I just, there's so, it is a, it's a fun thing to think about, and I hope we'll do it. I hope we'll think about our future. <clears throat> uh, think about the, you know, each of us, it says, has a guardian angel, an angel that's, and, and some of us, I think, got 20. Uh, tw some of us need 20. Some of us need more than that. Uh, <clears throat> those guys are always on guard for us and looking out for us. My dad used to always tell me, uh, you know, he, my dad was known for his one-line funny jokes, but he would say something like, when, don't ever go anywhere your angel won't go. You know, so that, that's all that needed to be said. That was, you know, wise warning from my dad. Uh, and, you know, so I think about, hmm, what would it be like to be a, an angel protecting Charles? What would it be like to be an angel protecting Charles? He'd be easy. Betsy now might be a challenge. No. <laughs> but, and Wes might be too. Uh, but just think about what it would be like if you had the responsibility of protecting somebody God assigned you to. Uh, and, you know, I, it begins to open up in my mind. All, there's a lot of jobs and opportunities and responsibilities. What about, you know, Michael or Gabriel, the one who stands for the people uh, and who is looking out for all of the people? I, 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 don't, I don't even know what that means. I don't even comprehend uh, all of that. But Yeah, we will inherit all things, and God will be our God, and we will be his son. O over here in Romans, we read this, Romans chapter 8. And I, I ask this question, we're going to read verse 18, then I'll, I'll, I'm going to ask us, do we believe it? Do we believe this verse? Now verse 18 says, for I reckon, this is Paul, see I knew Paul was a Texan, I knew it. <laughs> for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. We believe that, that the sufferings that we have to go through now, not worthy to be compared. Now to us, they're monumental, biggest thing in the world. He says, not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. Such a great future to be with God. And verse you know, 16 says, The spirit, spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God, join heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be glorified together. I don't know what lies around the corner for me. None of us do. I don't know what trial may come my way next week or this afternoon. I don't know. But what will I do when it comes? Will I trust in God? I don't think that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego really expected what they got. I don't think Peter and John really expected they'd get thrown into prison for walking up to the temple and healing that man. And, you know, he's jumping up and rejoicing. And then, you know, they're thrown in prison and told never to preach again. I don't think they expected that. But what did they do? You know, what, what did they do with that? Did they turn in with fear and cower at the trials that they had to face? I don't think you and I would like to live the life that Jesus Christ lived. I wouldn't. You know, the, the young man said, I'll follow you anywhere. And he goes, why do you want to follow me? Foxes have holes and birds have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. He, he was telling the young man, this isn't a bed of roses. Why, why I'm here is not, you know, for, uh, you know, comfort and, and a fun life. You know, he came to be our Savior. He knew it. And he, and he knew that he was going to have to suffer and die. And, and it was the things he had to learn and the, through the things he suffered was so that he, and I, that he could empathize with you and me with the difficulties and the things that we suffer. 
in the things that we go through. And, you know, it says he was tempted in all points like we are yet without sin. But it's not, it's not, it's not a bed of roses, is it? Life isn't just fun and games. It's full of, of challenges. And Christ wants us to become like he is. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3. And I want to read verses 10 through 17. And then I'll read one other verse and then we're going to close. But verse 10 of 2 Timothy 3 says, But you have fully known my doctrine and manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience. Who's talking here? Paul, right? Persecutions, afflictions. He didn't talk about his membership at the, you know, at the Dallas Cowboys. You know, whatever it be. I'm, I'm not against that. I'm just saying, uh, you know, there are there is a mindset out there that the the fullness of life is when you can buy season's tickets to the Cowboys games and have a 50-yard line box up, you know, to see it all. Because that is all the hope that they have is, you know, uh, all the joys and pleasures of this life. But guess what? We have something much greater to look forward to. That's not the ultimate. That isn't the end. That isn't the greatest thing that there is. Paul obviously sets a great example. The persecutions and afflictions which came unto me in Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra. I'm reading verse 11. <clears throat> what persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. And you know, that's where he was stoned and left for dead. I, I just, you know, I mean, you imagine being there with him, one of the disciples with him, and you know, they stone him and then drag him out. And by the way, those weren't just little rocks. You know, those were big boulders that they hurled at people. And usually, you know, if you, if you know the way they stoned, is they would drop them from a high point, you know, down on people till they're dead. Uh, you know, horrible, horrible, horrible. But Paul, yes, and all, uh, well, let me read verse 11 again. Persecutions, afflictions, which came upon me in Antioch at Iconium, and Lystra, what persecutions I endured, but out of them all the, the Lord delivered me. Yes, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Not may, not can. <laughs> doesn't say that. It says will. And we know that. We're, we're living examples. You, you guys already confirmed that because you all said you have trials. So you just confirmed it. It says, verse 13, But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Hey, and, that, you know, there's challenges. For, that's vexing to us, to see, to see things move so far away when we don't see biblical standards anymore in principles, in, in people anywhere, hardly, anywhere. But he says, verse 14, But continue, and this is, this is our, my encouragement today, that we continue in the things which we have learned and have been assured of. And let's never stop learning. Let's never stop growing. But let's never give up. Let's continue in what God has blessed us with. And that from a child you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. And I personally can read that and say, that, because I have grown up in the church like Nancy, since we were, you know, little, and others here as well, from the time we were very, very small. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Notice verse 17, that the man of God may be perfect thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And you know, I sure hope that we can take the difficulties and the trials that we go through and turn it around to this. 
that we can use it to furn be furnished unto all good works and to help others through difficulties. Isn't that what we want? We don't, I don't want anybody going through... I don't think Kurt wants anybody to go through what he went through, but if somebody would, wouldn't he be able to help them? If you have a particular trial that you go through, wouldn't you be able to help somebody to avoid it? That's, that's what we want. Thoroughly furnished unto all good works and to help people. That, you know, and to serve God. And we have a great future ahead of us. We cannot, we cannot, we've got to hang in there, everybody. We've got to hang in there. All right, I lied. I'm going to read one other scripture. And I'll refer to a couple more. Turn with me to Acts 20. I want to talk about Brother Paul again for just a second. Because this gives us a mental framework to deal with trials, what we're about to read. We all need a mental framework to deal. This will help us. Beginning here in verse 24, Paul says, But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself. In other words, hey, the trials and the tests that come, he wasn't trying to avoid them. He wasn't going to ignore them. And he had the right perspective. He says, I don't count my life dear unto myself. I think we really have to come to that. We have to be willing to lay, lay down our life if necessary. The Bible is full. Of, Hebrews 11 is full of those that are, you know, would be willing to do that. I don't know that in this day and age and time that we are called upon for that, right? At least not yet. We're called upon to make other sacrifices. And, uh, I've not been publicly challenged, you know, if you don't, you know, I'm going to cut off your head if you, you know, unless you denounce Jesus Christ. I, I haven't been challenged with that. Or, you know, something along those lines. He says, I don't count my life dear to myself that I might finish my course with joy. And the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify of the gospel of grace of God. And now, behold, I know that you, that you all, among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God, shall see my face no more. He knew he was, God had already told him, you know, you've got other, other things that you have to do. You're going to have to go to Rome, and you're going to testify there for me. And uh, preaching the kingdom of God shall see my face no more. Wherefore, I take you to record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men. For I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. And feed the, feed the church of God which he has purchased with his own blood. And then he goes on, you know, talking about the things that would follow. But, you know, none of those things, none of those things move me. I, there is a, a mental framework right there. We have to frame ourselves that none of the trials that we go through remove, move us away from the hope of the future and from finishing the course that God has set before us. Frankly, what we need and what we all want is to be able to say what Paul said in 2 Timothy chapter 4. I'm not going to go there. I'm just going to refer to it. Where he says... I have fought a good fight, and I have finished my course. May each of us say those words. I have fought a good fight, and I have finished my course. It's interesting to me that in Matthew chapter 24 and verse 13, you know, it says, He that endures unto the end, the same shall be saved. I've always had a mental picture of that verse. You know, it says, in, Iniquity shall abound, and the love of many shall wax cold. But he that endures to the end, the same shall be saved. And I've always thought, we've got to endure till the end of the course, you know, till the, Jesus Christ returns. I have a little different thought on that today. And the thought is, each of us has a different end. He that endures to the end. Now, for, some, for me, I always thought, 
I would endure until the return of Jesus Christ because I would obviously live until the return of Christ. Do you believe that's possible or not possible? I could go to my grave before the return of Christ. I've changed, had to modify my thinking. I've had to change that. But I better endure because my end is, might be different than Wes's or my end might be different than Buddy's or Faye's or Linda's. You know, our ends may be different, but we should all endure. And let's finish our course. Let's hang in there. Let's, let's, let's do that. Turn with me. Last scripture is over in 2 Timothy chapter 1. Oh, man, we don't have a songbook? Uh, yeah, I'm going to... Before I read this, 2 Timothy chapter 1, now let's read it, verse 12. It says, For the which cause I suffer these things, nevertheless I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Do we have that hope? I have every confidence that all of the effort that I put forth, I commit that to God, he will be faithful. Don't you feel that same way? Whatever we do, he will take, he, he will take note of. And it will stand us in good stead against the day. And, but there's a verse, we sing this song. In fact, we may sing it today. But verse 4, wow, this is powerful, says, I know not what of good or evil may be reserved for me. Of weary ways or golden days, before his face I see. But I know whom I have believed and, I am, and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed to him against that day. I hope we take a lot of encouragement in that. Let's hang in there. We have a great future. Whatever it is that we have to go through, it will be worth it. So, See you in the kingdom.